Welcome back to The Lemon Factor. I'm Chad and today I'm going to go through some data that I collected on a five day journey and over 2,000 miles of driving our 2019 Honda Accord 2.0 Touring. I did this long trip in part to test the gas mileage you can expect on a totally stock Honda Accord 2.0 not the 1.5 liter, but the two liter Honda Accord. But I didn't stop there. So as part of this five day road trip, I tested the car with the sport setting as well as the eco setting. So curious to see if changing those settings between the regular, the sport and the eco has an effect on your gas mileage. Then I took it a step further. And I know in one of my past videos where I dyno tested our car to see if it made a difference from putting 87 octane in the car which is what honda recommends versus 93 octane and there was a lot of discussion lots and lots of comments more people discussing how the higher octane is better for the car and how it drives better a lot of people also mentioned that the higher octane results in better gas mileage and i wanted to find out so i also tested different octane so i started with 87 we went to 93 i even tested 91 octane so for those of you who only have access to 91 octane i'll be able to give you the results comparing 87 91 and 93 right. wait there's more so we tested the gas mileage with the sport and the eco setting we tested the gas mileage based on octane rating and then i took it a step further and I tested with our K-Tuner. I hooked up the K-Tuner throughout the test. I measured and monitored the K-Con. So again, this is totally stock. I put the car back to the stock tune. There's no other performance modifications. So it'll be an apples to apples comparison. But that K-Con comparison between 87, 91, and 93 will be quite interesting. So if you're curious to see what the results are, then stay tuned. Before we continue, please don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you're made aware of future videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. All of the gas mileage readings are done on the highway. So if it wasn't on the highway, if it was suburban, if it was to stop and go, if it was city driving, that is extremely variable and would be very difficult for me to test for. However, if we put it on the highway and all testing was done between 70, 75 miles per hour, and when it was different, it was consistently different, the, the miles per hour. So the speed was relatively the same. Um, the number of miles before I record a reading was relatively the same, meaning I didn't wait until I put 20 miles on and then took the reading from the car. I waited until it was at least, at a minimum, 100 miles on the car. And in many instances, it was closer to 150 miles. So for some of you who claim you get all this great gas mileage and you're showing pictures of, you know, 40 miles per gallon from a two liter Accord, I question how many miles was your trip in order to get that. My belief is you probably were cruising on cruise control at a relatively modest speed for a short period of time. And yes, the car is gonna read that. But for those of you looking for a true reading, like I'm gonna go on an hour, a two hour trip, what can I expect? I think these are more indicative. This was five consecutive days. And over the five days, the temperatures and the relative humidity were about the same. So it wasn't that I did it in, some of the testing in May and then again in July and August, the hot summer, and then did it in December in the cold. It was five consecutive days. I ensured that our tire pressures, although the tires are different than the OEM, they're not high performance and I'll leave the type of tire uh, below, uh, but that is significant. Some of the tires have a higher rolling resistance, which will result in different gas mileage, but I did 
ensured that they were inflated to 32, 33 PSI consistently, cold tire pressure, not warm, cold tire pressure. In calculating the mileage, I used a trip computer. So whether the trip computer is 100% accurate or not, to me doesn't matter. It will be consistently off, if it is off, from one stat to the next. So I'm okay with that. I also had a full trunk as well as a passenger. So relatively speaking, you may experience higher gas mileage than what I had. But again, I had that full trunk and that passenger across all of the testing. So it remained consistent. As far as gas, uh, I did fill up at different gas stations. However, I ensured that they were all top tier gas stations. So. Okay, let's take a look at the data. Comparison between 87, 91, and 93 octane gas. As many people have pointed out through comments and through some of the forums out there, they firmly believe that you get better gas mileage with a higher octane gas. So let's take a look at what our results shows. Let's take a look at the comparison between the regular setting versus the eco setting versus the sport setting on the touring car. Is there a difference? And my gut tells me right away that if you put it in sport mode, you're gonna be uh, cruising at a higher RPM and thus you're going to use more gas. However, when you put it in eco mode, I don't believe that you're actually gonna cruise at a lower RPM. So let's take a look at the data and see how it compares between regular eco and sport. Let's take a look at the K control. Again, I used the K tuner version two, the one with the display, and I monitored the difference between 87, 91, and 93 to see if 93 octane really does improve your K control numbers, or does 87 have a huge impact and really mess up your K control numbers, or in the end, just what is the difference? Is it significant? Is it concerning or not? So let's take a look at what we have based on the different octane ratings. Okay, I have a little bit of a treat for you. For those of you who live at high altitude, I do have some numbers at high altitude. High altitude is, you know, five, 6,000 feet above sea level. So let's take a look and see minimal data, not as much as some of the other, but uh, I do have some data points uh, with altitude being taken into consideration. And lastly, uh, where did I go over the 2,100 miles? So I traveled from Boston, Massachusetts to Denver, Colorado, where uh, I've relocated and that will be my new base of operations for the Lemon Factor. And with it comes uh, some different and new testing. So the altitude, here in Denver and specifically actually where I am now living is over 6,000 feet. So I'm gonna see what impact the altitude has on our cars. In addition to the altitude, 
91 octane is the highest octane gas I can get here in Colorado. And I'm going to test the vehicles once again. You know, I like my dyno testing. I'm going to test the vehicles to see what the results are on 91 octane gas. I really hope you like this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. With that said, thank you for joining and until next time.